What's up guys and welcome back to another episode of the Realistic Career Mode. This is episode number 65 and we start today's of stuff on the back of our back-to-back -back losses for the first time as Chelsea manager against Manchester City and Spurs where our six-point gap at the top of the table is now being cut to three with two games to go before we officially reach the halfway point. It's safe to say our incredible start has gone. The honeymoon period is over and now the challenge is here. We are currently right now clinging on to top spot. So first game of today's episode, Crystal Palace. Patrick Vieira side coming to take us on here. Obviously a repeat of the FA Cup semi-final we saw in real life. I I've got to say, I'm really excited for Palace's future though, by the way. Like, seriously, I mentioned before, Patrick Vieira, in my opinion, has done a fantastic job in his first season as manager here at Selhurst Park. And they've got some brilliant young talent. They really do. No one excites me more than Michael Elise. Anyway, taking on Palace here, we opened the scoring early 14 minutes in Tammy Abraham with the goal and it was really good to see it as well because he had this red hot start of the season where he scored eight goals in ten now just two in his last seven for Tammy yeah he had an incredible start to the season he was well on course to be the front runner to win the golden boot since then he dropped to fourth in the top scoring charts but a big goal there as he's gets double digits and our first player to hit 10 this season so one nil Chelsea and then 21 minutes in passing out from the back as we do our goal scorer Abraham on the ball rolls it through to Dembele down the right hand side and the French winger bends it in as well you know I mentioned before this there's not a lot of uh, depth in this Chelsea team but the quality of depth is what's really telling here and especially on the flanks as well that's where we got the most quality and depth I mean you got an 89 rated Dembele who mostly comes off the bench in this team that tells you the story really so yeah Dembele Fred through by Tammy to get an assist to go along with his goal as he went tune it up and right for the right Palace trying to get back in the game would do so that man I just mentioned a moment ago there Elise say the former Reading midfielder drills it in bottom corner Chelsea 2 Crystal Palace 1 who is he going to represent on the international stage? I think it will be France. Even so, Palace with the goal. It's 2-1. Great camera angle. And my defensive woes continue this season with Chelsea. I just cannot defend in this year's FIFA and including this season as well. Get sliced open far too easily. But despite Palace getting back in the game, I still felt I'd win this one. I had much more chances than the visitors in this game. Another great opportunity there. Well saved by the Spanish goalkeeper, Gaita, as we were still only leading by one. And then just past the Almark chance to make it free. Tammy rolls through Dembele. Lovely one-two between the pair. And Guy to another really important save. Pushes it onto the post. Crystal Palace at this point hanging on to just a one-goal deficit. And oftentimes in FIFA, if you don't take your chances, you will get punished. I say that a lot. 15 minutes to go. We almost had that exact outcome. Armstrong going for goal. What a save by Eduard Mendy on our former player with Southampton, Stuart Armstrong. Great save there by Mendy on the veteran Scottish midfielder. We still led by a goal, courtesy of Eduard's big save. And with five minutes on the clock, a chance to wrap it up. Jong Sang Bin rolls through Christian Pulisic and Captain America. Make sure the points are ours. Yet four minutes to go. And finally, we restored our two goal cushion. To to surely wrap it up. I've got to be honest there. When Mendy bailed me out, I was thinking, right, this this finale of the game is going to go one or two ways. It'll be an onslaught of attacks by Palace. They'll find a leveller. I'll drop points once again, or I'll wrap up the game. In the end, it proves to be the latter, thank goodness. 30 seconds on the clock, leading by two. Palace playing a really high press, as I mentioned before. When the AI operate like a really, really high press and throw so many bodies forward at you, if you can work the space in behind and you've got quick players, you're going to be through for an easy one-on-one. -on -one. Exactly what happened. And there, a quick little cut back, and there is Jong Sang Bin who set up our third goal off the bench to score his first goal as a Chelsea player. Yep, the South Korean who we signed in the summer gets his first goal as a Chelsea player and wraps it up 4 1 to final score. Very action packed game that one, though. Really, really fun to play, and we do get back to winning ways. And thank goodness for that because after back to back losses, could not afford another slip up. So, with the game to go before the halfway point, we stay top of the table by three points. And I've not been playing my best in recent weeks and the following game was a big one final one of the calendar year taking on Leicester City away at the King Power Stadium Brendan Rodgers side in the game 
is so good. I mean, Leicester have built a really great team in this game. Last year, narrowly missed out on the Champions League places, finishing in fifth place. They finished above me, managing Southampton last year. This is a really good team. And, of course, they've got a couple of my transfer targets. None bigger, of course, than Declan Rice, the former Hammer. But they've got a great team, though. De Frutus is there. Dominic Calvert-Lewin is there. And speaking of which, for the first chance of the game, he wins a penalty. And how rare is this? A goalkeeper being penalised for a foul six minutes in. Eduard Mendy trips the former Toffee, and it's a definite spot kick. I could not complain about that one. Really smart from DCL, knocking the ball forward and initiating contact. Definite penalty though, and Frank Kessie, the former Milan midfielder, had the chance to give Leicester a very early lead from 12 yards. But Mendy pushes it behind and bails himself out. Eduard low down to his left, turns the ball behind for a corner, and keeps it goalless as he redeems himself. Ah, oh, Kessie. Should have gone for that. Carry Benzema Penenka on Tuesday. Oh, goodness gracious me. Can I just say real briefly, what a game. I mean, in terms of Champions League classics over the years, you know, I'm, I'm 29 now. I've been watching football since I was six years old, man. And I tell you, I've seen some incredible Champions League ties over the years. That one is definitely one of my all-time favourites. What a game. What a spectacle. Man City, of course, won it by four goals through. They could have won it by more, especially after their onslaught of chances in the early stages. But what a game. And I think that Benzema penalty really epitomised the quality on display in that game. And also the star-studded lineups of both teams operating to the best of their capacities. It could not have been a better game. And it's one of the rare moments where I don't feel bad that I skipped the gym. <laughs> Honestly. <laughs> I was so glad I did because what a game it was. I've been mean, so sad to have missed that one. Getting goal updates whilst I'm bench pressing, you know. Even so, great game, great penalty. Kessie should have taken a leaf out of Benzema's book there. But even... Even so, yeah, Leicester for the second and final game today. This was just like the previous game against Palace. A really action-packed match. Loads and loads of chances, but still tied at 0-0. Haradiki have made a couple of great saves in the goal for Leicester City. I missed a couple of golden chances. Dembele firing wide here from just outside the area. I felt I was the better team in the game. I had some really good chances, even though Leicester did, of course, get a penalty, which Mendy saved. But I just couldn't beat the former Vile Leverkusen goalkeeper. Great saves from the finished shot stopper in this one including there as we are still deadlocked at 0-0 with 12 minutes to go Leicester looking to win it here Perez crosses the back stick headed away Dembele receives it away we go on the counter nope gave the ball away quickly Calvert-Lewin finds Bernardo Silva who rifles one just over the bar. Still deadlocked at 0-0. And I couldn't believe it as well. Coming to the closing stages here neither team had broken the deadlock would it come here in the final moments? No, off the woodwork from Tammy Abraham looking for his second goal into off the crossbar and Leicester would eventually clear for our former defender Cesar as for the Quater final score at the King Power. Goal is straw. No wonder Haradik is gassed. He had an absolute workout in that game. 0-0 the final score. And I guess I'll take a clean sheet because we don't get many. And not a bad point away at the King Power, which is a really tough place to go against a good Leicester team as well. And again, you would have seen the lineup heading into the game there. It's, it's a really good team, to be fair. Outside shot of the Champions League this year. They're a really good side in this FIFA save. So as you can see, halfway through the season, after just one win in our last four, and seven points, uh, sorry, um, four points picked up from 12. As you can see, our lead at the top was 1-6. It's now 1. We're still top with 42, but Man City breathing down our next with 41. Keep an eye on the goal difference. They are better than us right now in terms of goal difference. Four points clear of Manchester United and five clear of Liverpool as well. But it's still really tight in the top four right now. Guardiola, of course, uh, getting that big win against us at Stamford Bridge recently. they got the top scorer in the league right now, Julian Alvarez, the Argentine, won the kid as well, whilst we do have Tamia Mason leading the way in the race for the assist title right now. The gap from six to one is, you know, I can't understate how really, really poor our recent run has been. And yes, you look at the fixtures and there have been tough games as well. You know, having to take on Manchester City and, and Spurs away, Leicester away, and also Crystal Palace too. But... That's a tough closeout to the calendar year there. We could have been clear by like eight, nine points had we got wins in those games. Instead, so I've got our lead cut from six to one. Nervously looking over my shoulder now with just one win in my last four games. But to be honest, I'll, I'll, I'll be totally honest here. I, I, I can't, I'm kind of glad about that as well. So what I didn't want to do in the first season with Chelsea 
was just run away with the league, you know, like be topped by like 10 points at Christmas and just feel as though it was ours to lose. Instead, it's still all to play for with just five points separating the top four. And that's what I wanted in our first season. I want to win the title, don't get me wrong. I mean, I need to, to keep my job, but I, I want it to be just like it is right now. Very tight, multiple teams in the race and a really thrilling race for the title as well. Last season, you know, three teams were separated by a point on the final day. I want the same sort of thing this year. This is going to be my first year in a title race. Well, touch wood, as long as I don't fall away with Chelsea. I want it to be a good battle. So far, it has been. Man City only a point behind. They are breathing down my necks, and I'm feeling very uncomfortable indeed. Even so, look at our players' stats as we officially hit the halfway point in the transfer window. Opens in today's episode. You can see two of our centre-halves now left on loan. Uh, Josh Brockin's gone out on loan to Angus in France. Nowhere near good enough for our first team right now, so keep an eye on him. And also, Jao Branthwaite has joined Hector Busquet on loan at the King Power right now. He's gone to Leicester for the rest of the season. So, I would say as the transfer window opens, we, we do have a little bit of money, not a lot. But you look at the squad here and you would say, what do we need to change? Well, at the moment... It's a very strong team. It's very solid, no doubt about that. But the only real concern for me, well, I alluded to it at the start of today's episode, is the lack of numbers in depth. Now, we've got a lot of quality in terms of the players outside the first 11, but not many numbers. And if we do get some injuries at the start of the first half, the second half of this season, then we might need a few more players for cover, possibly in the centre of our position. Now, two of our players are left on loan. And if we are going to win that domestic double, we'll need everyone involved. But that will end today's episode of the Realistic Career Mode, guys. Big thank you for watching. I enjoyed it. If you had a beautiful sure like, much love to you all. Have a fantastic day. And I'll see you for the next episode of the Realistic Career Mode featuring our first signing of the January window. And um, yeah, you don't want to miss it. I'll see you for it very soon.